I guess we'll start. Um, welcome, everybody. My name is Murli Sitram. I'm based in Zurich, Switzerland. I'm in a role of a senior technical specialist. I'm in the area of integration, and I'm covering the MIA region. So one could say I'm on loan for this event uh, to speak to you in, in, in the at the API days uh, for India. I just want to set the scene. Where where are we moving us? Uh, where are we moving around? Uh, what's the say the big picture in it? And then we'll dive in into the real topic um, to say uh, what are the options nowadays that that uh, an API management platform uh, provides to to expose APIs or what we call APIs nowadays, but what in fact is is a uh, different implementations in that sense. And that's exactly the point I want to highlight is we in IBM, in our product landscape, differentiate the, the bit of integration, meaning implementation. That's where you have some logic, some flows with, with um, doing transformations, mappings, uh, complex mappings, I have to say, where you have an overlap with capabilities you find in, in API management solutions that also do um, some mappings, but never at the, at the, the level uh, a dedicated, say, solution that that addresses these esb patterns um, can handle it uh, protocol bridging all that stuff um, we see as a, as an implementation that can be anything from really heavy lifting uh, transformation uh, data mapping stuff but also simple uh, or what is perceived simple as as a message queue as a as a kafka topic uh, something like that that is all uh, summarized for us or in our view, as an implementation. So here saying provider focus, that means it has its own life cycle. Um, we are not relying on that um, entirely to be part of that life cycle as an as a API management solution. We just want to expose what's coming here from the implementation. And, and that's then a second step for us to decide what do we expose? Do we expose everything that we get in terms of data? Um, do we allow a subset of that? Um, and that's that's then the, the step we we take here in the exposure area. Um, and and at the same time, we we focus on the consumers, and the consumers are those who are using the API. So we should have the knowledge um, which which kind of data are they are they um, requiring? Is it translating to one of the backend services we have? Is it multiple? Do we have to do multiple API calls together, um, merge that data together, map that as one, and then, then get it back. Is it something, again, fairly simple as having a SOAP service, but since um, the consumers are looking for REST APIs, we just want to have a transformed uh, SOAP service that we expose all that stuff uh, being a, a role there. Obviously, if we do a good job, there are more consumers, there's more traffic. We have to protect our, our backends. That's where the whole rate limiting topics uh, come into play and, and protect our back end to one, but then also allow us to um, at one point monetize the APIs. Honestly, I haven't seen many that, that are going in that direction, but um, but for sure it's something uh, we'll, be, we'll be seeing soon. And uh, not to uh, neglect aspect of socializing APIs, being, being able to create a transparency on what is available on one, um, get the consumers into a discussion um, have their feedback, maybe improve our APIs upon that, um, either by adding data points or, or removing data points because it doesn't suit their needs, but then also having insights in, are those APIs we're providing used at all? Does it make sense for us to maintain them? Um, could we retire them without any issue and, and not harming anyone because no one's using it? And, and I guess that's something um, which, People who have been a bit longer in the industry know the, the question is, is anyone using this application or this service? Sometimes it results in let's switch it off and see who shouts. And that kind of approach shouldn't be shouldn't be necessary if you have the insights of, of who's using um, these APIs. Now, what we're looking at is, is basically a larger, say, product that's called Cloud Pack for Integration. API management is is the exposure and everything to the right of that uh, application integration, end-to-end -end security, enterprise messaging, translated to MQ, 
event streaming, translating to Kafka, and high-speed data transfer are in, in the view from the slide before our implementation. So, and we are moving really in the API management area today, uh, not, not deviating in the other areas, although it would be interesting for sure, but um, there is the limitation of time also um, that keeps us from, from doing that. Now, how does the API management solution as such look? We start here in the in the top uh, right with the API manager. That's the brain of the solution where all the API definitions are being held. They can either be created directly um, in the API manager via the browser or by using a developer toolkit um, that's here on the top right that runs locally on a workstation, um, allows to really do a complete unit test on my, on my laptop and then publish uh, the API definition to the API manager where it can be then taken into its, its a life cycle um, along um, to serve the consumers that, that, that we target. Upon publishing an API, it, it gets published uh, to, the, to the API gateway for enforcement purposes. And then also it becomes visible in the developer portal where we can, uh, yes, address um, our, our target audience, be that internal, external, um, be it a partner, company so we can really have say these three flavors uh, which are most common one is really public internet you don't know anyone there you just uh, open it up and say you can register yourself in the portal uh, and feel free to use whatever whatever we provide here uh, feel free means obviously people have to subscribe but then um, it's it's open in the sense anyone who has access to the internet can use that the part one is you have a contact at the partner, you invite them to be the owner of, of what we call a consumer organization. Um, and they then add their own people to use the APIs, but they are then rather focused in, in a, from a use case perspective to the partner's needs. And then the internal one is again, a more open aspect, but just restricting the access to internal people where you can create transparency in the sense of what have we done, what services are available, um, can we prevent you from, from reinventing the wheel in that sense? And then there's also an efficiency aspect in, in there because um, the idea behind it should be that you have a higher degree of reuse in, in, in the end. Now, once the, the um, consumers have created their application, subscribe to an API, at runtime, the application will do its call. It will hit the gateway, go to the backend, respond, uh, to the application, whatever uh, data is needed. As a byproduct, we get the analytics, again, insights in how often is an API used, which applications are using it, not which users of the application are using it. That's an important distinction to make. But then also to have the, uh, say, the, the, the quality benefits and uh, quality numbers in that sense to say, uh, what's, the, what's the latency we're seeing, what are transaction times you're seeing, just in case someone says, hey, this is taking too long uh, for your service to respond, you have, a, you have an idea where to look for. Uh, do note this distinction of management and runtime. This is intentional at runtime. The gateway doesn't need any communication with the API manager. So it is, in theory, possible to shut down the API manager completely and the, and the API gateway still will operate um, as, as nothing is, has, has happened. I'm saying in theory, because um, you cannot assume that every gateway um, will be in a state to, to run on its own. There will always be someone that either wants to work on an API or there will be someone trying to consume an API. And for that, you need the API manager. But in the sense of if something would happen to the API manager, the impact you face is no new APIs can be published and no new APIs can be uh, subscribed to. But Anything that has been done will still be working. So if we then look at what we call an API hierarchy, that's really the what options do I have uh, to create such an API or to expose backend? And yes, I can build an API definition from scratch, which caters more to the, say, front to back approach. I can expose an existing REST API. I can expose an existing SOAP API. There's a say a specialty in, in our product uh, with uh, the, the ability to 
generate APIs from say databases based on the loopback framework with connectors. So they should ease uh, your life in, in creating those APIs, especially if you have a say a, a customer to product relation, which is a one to N or then a, a even more complex an end to M relation between two entities and, and having the, all this, the options uh, generated for you is, is for sure a big help in that versus you defining everything manually and, and try to cover everything. Then GraphQL that has been coming uh, in the last, say, 12 months. Um, again, GraphQL very powerful, but also dangerous in the sense of it's a query language. So we have to be sure that not everything can be can be queried for. And uh, you need something to secure that, that aspect. And then async APIs as the last option, which means messaging uh, like Kafka, MQ, that, that you can expose at least the, the access to those um, to those endpoints and and don't need anything in addition so anyone who's interested to see what topics can i subscribe to they can they can uh, have that as well now all these say single apis are then grouped as so-called products an api can be part of one or more products and uh, the product then itself is published to a catalog a catalog is a logical unit um, that is targeted at a at a um, yes a, an audience of yours, be that internally, externally, as I described before, and that's made visible through um, the developer portal. So once this structure is kind of set in your head, it's it's fairly easy to to understand um, how that works. And there's an additional level in terms of segregation, just to be aware of that as well. So there are different levels of segregation that we can that we can enable with the product. One is obviously the physical install. So we have multiple installs for, say, uh, dev test, integration test, uh, pre-production, production. But then you could also say, no, we'll, we'll just have two physical installs. One is production, one is non-production. And then within, within an install, you have this uh, concept called organization. An organization, again, is a, a logical separation within an install that allows you to uh, provide those APIs uh, to your target audiences, which which are held in these catalogs, and then within a catalog, there's there's this uh, concept of spaces, which translates to something like subfolders, where you have the the ability to have teams separated from each other, but then with one yeah face to the outside world, which is the catalog, or the the rather the portal that is attached to that, versus having multiple portals for either business units or regions you could have just uh, one catalog and then have multiple spaces within that where, where uh, the teams uh, cater in. And how these are organized, that's really up to you. The, there's no given organization within those. Um, it's, it's really up to you to say, we do it by backend technology, by region, by, uh, by business units. Um, they're really uh, free to go for, for the approach. You, you feel it's best. If you ever come to the conclusion, no, the, the road we've taken is not the right one, you can fairly easily switch that by creating a new catalog or a new organization and then just republishing those APIs. So in, in that sense, the, um, the work is not lost. The only thing you have to make sure is that people have then the right to publish into the new organization and the new catalog accordingly. But I think it's easier to look at that and. There are these aspects I want to show you, um, starting with the async API. Uh, how do we deal with REST APIs? Um, how easy can we actually secure an API with a with an OAuth provider, especially um, having the reuse aspect in mind? What is the, the GraphQL um, API look like? And then also putting a, a bit of challenge forward there, saying um, or trying to, to expose a, a SOAP endpoint as a as a rest api in five minutes or in less than five minutes which includes the protocol transformation and uh, data mapping uh, sorry for that line break there but that should be something um, that we can achieve now let me switch to um, to my portal i have to share that with you first that makes sense okay please 
give a, a shout or a, a note in the chat if you cannot see it or if it's too small. Um, I admit I just got a new screen, so it might be a bit too small from the resolution. Let me just make it bigger. Okay, so this is the entry of the of the developer portal that that we provide out of the box. It's it's Drupal based, so anyone with uh, CSS HTML skills can can uh, change the look and feel uh, to your needs. You don't have to use it. Um, you can say we have a UI framework on our own and just leverage the the documented APIs in the background that then will provide you the same information that you see here. Um, but then. Uh, you have still the benefit of the functionality being available and you only uh, have to deal with with the your ui framework in that sense and not even care about the the integration of, of the information that much now the key aspect is here i am locked in as a um a consumer in this in this portal the self-registration is enabled so i could register myself you can add any any identity provider of your liking, like uh, Microsoft login, LinkedIn, Google, um, these kind of um, OIDC providers, your own internal ones, if you have one, um, that's really um, you, to your liking. Here, we, we use the, the user registry that we ship the product uh, with, and that allows me then to, to see what APIs are available, and there's a, there's a whole variety of things. So there's the GraphQL API, there's an async API. Um, this is a SOAP um, service exposed as SOAP and REST. I have a, an API that is coming from another, from our application integration capability and automatically published into my, my um, development environment here so I can test it fairly easy and so on. I'll get to the other ones a bit later on. Just highlighting that here we have a OAI three spec API and an OAI two spec API from the from the Swagger Pet Store. I guess that's a common one. Um, but let us look at the async API first. What what does this provide? So here I have different endpoints of um, of Kafka topics. This one is a, a local one running within my my instance of the Cloud Pack, and this one is actually a, a Kafka topic that is. Uh, residing in, in our cloud. So I see the endpoints here. I didn't do a great deal in documenting it uh, very well, but that's that's then what we what we provide here to um, to connect to to um, this um, this topic in a first step. It's about what we call uh, socializing um, the endpoint, meaning making it transparent, making it available now in a, in a second step happening soon. We're looking at um, enabling the same basic capabilities that we know for for REST a APIs with rate limiting, uh, enforcing any any other policies uh, in terms of security that you might have. Uh, but that's that's the second step we're looking at. Now, having done that, that's fine. Similarly, um, we have the the, the account. API that's built on GraphQL. For sake of comfort, I've I've just put a sample payload to use or a sample query to use. And here, once I have subscribed to the API, I can start using it now. You'll see if I switch here and start executing this query, it allows me to get a response. If I press again, this has also subscribed to it, and this one will complain that there's no valid subscription. So the the GraphQL being a very, say, immediate uh, thing and, and 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 providing immediate feedback here is is helping me here as well. Again, once I've, I've subscribed, I can I can run these queries again, and 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 they won't um, provide any any uh, obstacle in that sense to get the information that I want. Now, if I have something in my query that is not um, considered. A, a good query in that sense that I'm looking here now for a credit card information with the number expiry date um, that is set uh, not to be allowed. I'll, I'll get to the point how that looks from a from API provider side, but here I can I can really not query for that information. I can try as hard as I want. It won't be allowed. And similarly, 
if we go through the other ones, I mean, I mean, this one is a, it's really a soap service that that's then exposed as rest and, and soap. And, and we have the, the ability to, to do all that. And, and besides having the say standard um, APIs exposed and, and how that looks, I'll, I'll show you now, which is switching to the API manager, which is our, our user interface um, to develop APIs and then uh, publish them accordingly and, and manage them. And you see here a whole list of those APIs. Um, let's start with the, the async API here, which is, as I said, when I, when I start doing it, um, this is really the simplest form in that sense that I get. Um, let me just copy this to, to give you a, an idea how that looks when I create a new one. So I say I have a Kafka topic. Whatever summary um access the topic, any additional description here I say what are my my bootstrap servers, any authentication credentials um I need to I need to um, pass on I can I can put in here. And then I have a, a topic name, which I then can say, um, let's say this is called to API connect. I just say next, and this is, I'm ready for, for this to be published. Now I have various options again here to say, I want to publish it as a, as a product on its own, meaning it will create a product as a, as a shell for this API and then uh, publish it. Or I can just say, hang on. I do have a product here that's called async API um, where I define, first of all, some general information. I define who can see it visibility in the sense of, um, can you see the, um, sorry, <coughs> can you see the, the published API products in the portal without being logged in? Do you have to be uh, registered and logged in or do I even go to a level where I say, no, I want only specific um consumer organization uh, consumer organizations um to see it so i can restrict the visibility here um for that product and similarly the subscribability of the product that i can uh, restrict accordingly ideally these two uh, match otherwise it doesn't make much sense uh, to use those values and and then yeah I'm aware of that. Here I can then say which APIs are part of my product. And that's where I can say, okay, I've just had my Kafka topic added. Let me let me add that to the product. Um, plans are really a, a concept of of um defining rate limits, which doesn't apply here for the for the async APIs. And here you see this box of billing integration. That's another option we provide. Uh, to integrate with Stripe, so you can you can start building, say, a three-day trial, and then pay for the usage of an API or a ten-day trial. That's up to you, and then have a monthly fee that um, that you pay for those uh, for the usage of the API. We're looking at enhancing the the business model, if you want, um, in the sense of uh, having a revenue split for for the for the API develop uh, for the API consumer and you, so um, that there is an incentive to use the API as well. And and um, to hopefully attract obviously more more people that way. Now once once I've said my um, my product definition is is okay the way it is, I can then go and say let me publish this. Now there are various options or various aspects I can I can look at. If I just do a publish, any existing subscription will be will be deleted. I can say preserve my subscription, please. Um, I can say stage, which will not be visible yet, or I can then what I did is updating APIs, meaning um, add additional APIs. I can save the product as a new version, download it, which is basically a, a YAML file or delete it if I want. Now I'll just publish preserve here. I say which sandbox, uh, which catalog, sorry, I want to publish this to, and there's a additional level of granularity i can have multiple gateways uh, uh, gateway services assigned to a to a catalog so i can also specify which specific uh, gateway service do i want this uh, 
API definition being published to. This makes sense if you're having uh, APIs that are published to internal and externally accessible gateways, you might want to start with the internal one and then over time get to the to point where you say, um, let me publish this to the external um, consumers as well. So this publishing is done. It will take a, a few seconds for us to see the, the third API showing up here in the API product. And there it is. So um, this is the, the say the process from creating an API definition to publishing it. And now we look at how do we deal with other uh, technologies in that sense. And the easiest one is really an existing um, REST endpoint. I have a, a very easy endpoint that just does nothing else but, but provide me with um, um, a time and date uh, the server is running on. It's, it is secured with a client ID. I'm, I'm happy with that for the time being. There's a, a path that I've just uh, defined as part of the API. And then there are additional properties, which in this case, for this simple API, I don't need it. Um, I have the same information displayed as a, as a YAML file. Takes some time to load, but here, this is really no, no magic in the sense this is all uh, human readable. Um, sometimes it's even quicker to edit the YAML than clicking through the whole screen and, and, and doing the, the change that you want to do. Uh, so that is this. And then there is also this assembly view, which provides a rather a flow-based view um, that allows you then to, to start um, adding in additional policies that you might need. Now, this is, as I said, a very simple one. This will just call a target endpoint with the uh, with the path, um, and then provide me with the uh, with the response back. I do have um, the ability to set this API online and test it from here. Um, if I do this, these become active. So either I can now say I'll copy this over and use it, say in, in something like Postman, or I just use the test client that we've built in, which looks again very uh, postman-ish, if I may say so, and then I can see the um, the result, which still seems very small. Um, but that's that's the this um, the aspect here of just guiding you through these these um, elements here. I do have a different view on on the the response. I also get a detailed view on on the header and so on, and the trace view is. Obviously not that spectacular for a, a simple policy like this, but here I get the the idea of what was my request object. I get all the details that were sent to the service. I get all the details that came back in the response. So I really have the 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 full picture or the the full information at a development time to um, create those APIs. Now. I've shown you the the plan concept that is attached to to the the products which which allow you to set rate limits for for consumers, but there are additional <clears throat> rate limits, sorry, um, that you can set. So if you have a more complex flow that branches out to different backend services, we can we can set additional rate limits here, uh, depending on whatever um, uh, value you are looking for. In addition to that, we can there's a, a this thing called gateway script. Uh, um, this is a reduced version of JavaScript that allows you to virtually do anything in a programmatical way. Having said that, the gateway as such is a configurable gateway. It doesn't allow you to run any code. So if you would expect to deploy any, say, Node application or Java application, that is not possible. But once, once um, you've You've configured your policies that you want to use. This is not a, an exhaustive list. What we see here at the bottom is user defined. So if there are specifics that you know you'll reuse anyway over time, um, you can add them as, as a user defined policies and, and pull them in into the assembly. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel, uh, for example, by, by authenticating yourself or an API call uh, to a specific backend system. Now, 
I skipped one aspect here, which says start generating tests automatically. Um, I'll switch over to this console, which is uh, our API management test capability. And this allows me to create test cases for my APIs. Now, why is this interesting? Um, it does test not only for availability, but also for quality. And you see there are some, some tests that have gone wrong. And I can look at the, at these test cases now, um, I'll just create a new test with a simple example, which is called random user. There's a service out there that generates a user for me. Um, there's a guided, say, guided tour in that sense that will will take you through step by step. I'll I'll just do that for the sake of the demo here. Now, if I say And that without a typo. So this should give me, first of all, a status 200. And here I have the uh, the generated or yeah, the generated user with all the information. Now what I can do from this is say, please generate a test for me. Just click, click this through. And what it has done is really created a test case in the sense of. First of all, I expect the status code to be 200. That's fine. I expect the payload, uh, the response being JSON. There must be a payload. Um, and then it starts with what fields must exist and so on. So I have a, a way of quality checking my API as well. Uh, and this helps me um, then to rerun this as a regression test, as a, as a say, recurring test at run uh, in production, for example, to just see are my APIs delivering what I need? And and here, if I if I save this and exit, these um, these APIs are grouped together as so-called um, test suites. So a test suite a test suite sorry is is these these four APIs and um, or, sorry APIs API tests, and I can run them again via an API. So I can I can regularly run those uh, test suites against my my APIs and have an idea of of what the quality is. That in turn will show up in this dashboard. I can see there there have been some failures, and if I go and look um, at at such a report, I see um, looks like a 401. That means the the subscription for the API was not at all done. So okay, fine. That's a Let's consider that as a as a user error rather than uh, than being a technical error. Similar here. Do we have another case? Let me just switch to the the quality view here again. We see the the user full is one that's causing causing the problems. Let me just switch here to the to the tests. Delete this guy and see. If I can just run them all and see if. They seem to run through properly again. Just trying to see if, if I get the error doesn't look like. Um, then I have to go back to my um, overall dash and see um, when was the the last one that failed a few hours back. Yeah. So okay. This see it shows up as an error. Looks like a minor issue. The postcode was not in the in the format that I that I expected it to be. Either I adapt the test or I just say no. I'm not going to to validate the postcode uh, the format at all, and and I skip I skip that. So in turn, the the test obviously will return successful. Now, leaving leaving the test again, switching back to um, to this API which I have well secured with the client ID might not be enough. I might I might strive for for a bit more, saying um, hang on. We want to secure secure the API um, with an auth um, provider. Now there are two options um, to to use an auth provider. One is an external one. One is the the built-in auth provider the gateway provides, and and we have that on various levels where you can define your auth providers. So one is on a on an install level. That means as a as a cloud admin, as we call it, 
um, you define the auth provider and share it with everyone um, that's uh, sitting on top of your installation. Uh, these people will be leveraging um, your your um, uh, your APIs can enable um, the auth provider when needed, and it's as easy as saying just I want this uh, being used with the scopes. What the the provider definition obviously has is to say which flows do you provide? Um, is it all of them? Is it a subset of them? Um, that's then something you have to uh, define once. Now, if I'm not happy with that, what I'm getting here, I can still go into this um, resources view and here define my own my own provider saying, um, let me just go through this quickly here. I can really say I want all of them. Let's. I want the different client types being being supported. Let's click through quickly here. And then I have my my own um, auth provider here for my provider organization. I'm a member of multiple organizations, so I cannot see um, this auth provider in another organization. And if I have my API secured with with the um, the auth provider and publish it. That in turn then looks this way that I can get here. Say, let me try this. Um, let me just take a, a sneak peek at my cheat sheet, which one it was, this one. I need the, the client secret for that. Username, a password. I say I want the scope. I'm getting the token, hopefully. And if I try this call, it's interesting. Just before it worked, I can prove that to you. Um, yeah, let's. Let's go forward also in the interest of time. Um, assuming this works, um, I get the response back. But that's that's the basic mechanism of, of having this old provider as a resource and being able to, to reuse that um, again and again. Now, also with the time being left, let us go to the challenge. I've yeah comfortably set myself. Let me create a a, a REST proxy for a for a, a web service that I have um, exposed or that I want to expose rather. I do this. I do this. I will give it a different version number because I know there's already a version one. I'll just delete this. And basically, I'm done. So. What it has done under the under the cover is really um, create the parsing of the input, mapping that from a, from JSON to um, to XML. So this can this can then be sent to the service, which is an external one. It will parse the response and then add the output back. So I get the response in in JSON. And, and the way this looks, there are, again, two options. One is test it here with this one, with the beauty of having a, a small um, generator of, of, of payload. Let me just take this one. So once I've done that, publish it, go to the test client, say this, switch to the body then i have not subscribed for it yeah now my math is not that good to to assess if this if this was okay but let's assume this is okay um but it didn't take five minutes it took two to three minutes um to get that done and, and that's a huge help in that sense similarly um, the the mechanism applies for a, for a GraphQL um, endpoint, which is this one. 
at at creation you just define what's the um the end point and then if we look at the assembly this is really it introspects the graphql schema builds up this whole tree and, and you see what what uh, complexity level you can reach in, in these assembly flows but then more interesting is here the graphql schema where it says um there's a weight uh, the weight is then used to calculate um, the cost the so-called cost of of this um this query and that's up to you to define to say um which which um kind of uh, this thing do you want to assign a weight to now there are two warnings in here which I can then say, okay, do I want to limit this? Yes, yes, please. Do I want to limit it to a size here for this? For the second aspect, I would say yes. And this is where, where I get the support in, in, in having say additional measures that, that not one query can, can return. I don't know how much, how many uh, fields of data, rows of data or, or any sensitive information for, for what we know. Um, so that helps me secure on a on an additional level um these um these apis from here on it's the same the same concept uh, apply a rate limit apply a plan uh, to the product publish it as a product so it it shows up again here in the in the portal that's uh, where i where i shown you this um and then i can start here again with the uh yeah, this is the credit card one. Beauty here is that uh, that you have this history function, so you can just switch back and and query these these um, APIs. Now I'm through with this. There's one aspect again with uh, which is uh, important with uh, with the cloud pack. I feel is if you have multiple backend technologies, then the tracing of those. Uh, becomes becomes more challenging tracing in the sense of understanding how are these these APIs used. So if I look here in my sandbox, I have this analytics view where I see um, on the API level which uh, which products which APIs are being used. But but then if I switch to the dashboard view, the, a dashboard is nothing else than a, a set of visualizations that you put together and the the whole thing is based on on the elastic uh, stack so anyone a bit familiar with that can can create those visualizations but i see here different response times happening um i might wonder why 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 are these happening but here i'm i'm also dependent on the back end uh, technology uh, being used whatever implementation i have and i'm calling that that might be contributing to this uh, response time so for that within the cloud pack we have that thing called integration tracing which allows me to do a so-called cross-component tracing and then just as a sample this shows me here this is an exposed api it has um uh, certain steps it goes through it it switches to the application integration capability which is called app connect therefore the app c but then part of this is sending a message to mq and then responding so here i have a a more granular view on what's happening in the implementation world versus the the analytics and the api management uh, piece where i only see the 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 exposed api in that sense um, and then have a have an idea a rough idea what what has been happening sorry what has been happening in terms of response times but but i don't get to the details from here so i, I really have to either call someone and say, hey, can you look up what that service is doing? Or I have the other option with the cross component tracing to then dig in and, and, and go on um, to have more information. Having said that, the, the published products here are all uh, shown to me. I also have the, the consumers, uh, the consumer organizations, meaning all, everyone who is registered in the portal is being uh, displayed to me similarly which applications have they registered with client ID. I could uh, help in, in resetting credentials, creating subscriptions from, from the backend. So this could be kind of a support function uh, if, if ever needed, if, the, if it's really too hard for a, for a consumer to do it on their own. And the tasks is a special, special item here. You can set uh, subscriptions to require an approval. This will show up here and, and that's where um, everything 
say so start from, from from the beginning again once you have approved a subscription you basically just watch the analytics if you're in a test environment you might want to have a, have a look at subscriptions or applications block them if it's a test script running and then flooding your your gateways with requests that's an option uh, to do because it's possible so it's also a helpful um, a tool in that sense to just say uh, no i'm going to delete the, the consumer organization and, and the application as a whole or just block a certain subscription here um uh, delete the subscription so at least at the gateway level every transaction will be will be blocked and as i said there's a uh, there's also a session now uh, a round table at uh, what is it four o'clock um that that deals exactly with the topic of multi-style um integrations managing those uh, with our um, offering manager tony Curcio. so if you're interested in that i would recommend to listen to that and having talked a bit too long we still have a a minute or two for questions otherwise you're you might have enough time to run for a tea coffee and and come back for the next session. But thank you for, for sticking with me and um, having listened to me and, and feel free to connect on LinkedIn. If you have any uh, any question following up, um, I can also connect you to the uh, to my colleagues that are that are active in India. So uh, that's not a problem for sure. If there are no questions, I think we can close this session and I do wish you a, a good remainder of, of the API Days event and hope to see you again in either a I'm just seeing the question, what do you mean? How is audience for this webinar? So do you mean who, who should be the audience for this webinar or? Um, this is generally just giving an idea on, on what we can do from a say ma managing, some say endpoints. I don't like the, the word because it's it's already occupied by the, the device management uh, discipline, but this was really a rather an overview than, than a deep dive in, into what you can do. So from that, that perspective, it can be an API developer, an API, um, say, product manager, if you have that role already. Some are still building up this role, um, can be architects. So there's a there's a, a variety of people um, that, that could be a, a target audience for this webinar. Certainly less interesting, I would say, for operations people, um, as, as we didn't touch the, the operations aspect at all. Um, then for you, it's interesting to know that everything I've shown you is available as, a, as an API. So um, from, from installing to creating a, a topology to configuring users, um, resources like OAuth providers to publishing APIs, this is all available as APIs, which can be part of a, of a DevOps um, uh, approach. Um, obviously, we have, we have customers having having pipelines that drive uh, everything they do in terms of API, so they don't open these consoles at all. And, and I guess that's that's then the interesting bit for you. But if you want to either send me a message here within the, the event or on LinkedIn, I can I can send you the documentation to, to our API so you get an idea what all, what all is possible. Um, then you can then you can uh, for sure also uh, take an assessment on that. Does that answer your question? You're welcome. 
So we reached the time, if I'm not entirely wrong. So if there's no other question, I there's not not much to do than wishing you a nice uh, remainder of the of the event, and uh, hope to either see you at another event or feel free to to get in touch and 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 um, yeah, place your questions if there are any, or if you say we want a, a bit more extensive walkthrough, then happy to do that as well. Yeah.